Be there or be square. Do you know why they say be square, Kat? I don't actually know. Because you're not around. You're not around it. Yeah. Ah. So you must be. You didn't know that? No. That'll reach Coomer in a few years. Don't worry about that. (laughs) All right. A few decades. (laughs) Star Wars just arrived. All right. Tim's stat deep. Dive, 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 dive. Dive. First player. Oh, boy, this guy's playing some good footy. Keon Colomantungi. Talk to me. It's a, firstly, it's a, it's a very tight battle between you and Kempi at who can butcher Clara Matangi's name worse. That is the richest thing <laughs> I have ever heard in my entire life. But I'm going to let it slide. Continue. But, Rue, I'm a country bogey. Like, I'm still working out getting a grasp of the English language. You're this, like, well-educated city boy. Like, you have no excuses. Proceed, mate. Take us away. I want him, but I don't see how I can get him. And I'll tell you why I want him. We spoke about dual positions before. He's playing as an out-and-out middle at the moment. And he's got a three-round average of 87.7. In those games, he's based 58 per game. Obviously only available at 2RF at the moment. The last dual position updates come in round 18. What's going to happen, I think, is that... Cam Murray, post-origin, will come back. They've got the buy-in around 17, but after that, Murray's going to start getting named at 13. Keon, do we think, is going to get named at prop? I I would, yeah. Yeah, every chance to. But the way they do it is you need to get three games up in the position for it to get the duel. So it's not going to happen in time. Yeah. Like even on the weekend, because Murray came back from injury, he came off the bench and Keon got named at 13. That's all they're going to look at. Yeah, yeah. If Keon was named, got dual position – he would just be elite at front row. In, if I knew he was going to get that, which based on everything I just said, I don't think he will, I would have just found found the cash for him this week and got him in. But it, I don't get me wrong, I still think he's a good buy at 2RF, but just that if he was available at front row, he'd have been a must-have nearly, I reckon. Yeah, no, it's a very fair shout. I do think that for the sake of consistency, it's the right play to not give him dual position. I'm not knocking it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just knocking he it. He deserves I, it, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I won't hold this one against him. I, I, do, I do. It's one thing that um, you know, it's a very pro super coach on this show. I think that's one thing that NRL fans do quite well. They break it into edge and middle forwards mm. because, like in super coach, all the locks. Or like Pat Carrigan is only available in two RF. Yep. He's a middle forward. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, anyway, can't yeah. win them all. Anyway, don't ever bring up NRL. Yeah, fantasy don't say the F word. <laughs> like, like that one. Yeah, swear jar stuff. All right. Yeah. So Keon, very interesting watch over the next couple of weeks. Oh uh, yeah, be a big play to grab him in. Um, Alex Johnson of heaps of fucking tries. Talk to me. <laughs> A lot of interest in him this week. Mm. He's at he's at a mouth watering price. He's four hundred and five k. This is a bloke who's been he's always been a one you've got a time when the bunnies are hot and he's scoring multiple tries. I'm not going to say tries, multiple tries. He has had some big runs over the years. I remember, I think it was two years ago. Darussi always refers to it on the playbook podcast how he missed out on it and it sunk his season because he's went on this huge streak of try scoring and tons and massive scores. Uh, and people have seen the 405k price tag, a Rabbitohs outfit that's been pretty well rejuvenated, and they're going, let's do it. But a lot of reasons why I am not keen. Firstly, he's averaging 41 this season, which is terrible. He scored four tries in that in eight games and hasn't scored over 58. So it's not like he hasn't scored all season or anything. Like There's still been tries, there's still been line breaks, hasn't scored over 58. His base per game... 17 points, which is right up there with the worst bases for wing or players in the competition. Adding on top of that, Latrell Mitchell out this week, who feeds him a lot of his tries. Latrell Mitchell will also be out round 19. Secondly, Cody Walker has made the switch to the right edge away from Alex Johnston. He's going to be getting even less quality ball. So I, I'm not saying I won't own him this season, but nothing I've seen as of yet has suggested to me that he's a buy. Looking at the stats of Alex Johnson from a super coach point of view is one of the rankest things I've ever seen. Mm. He's scored three tries in the last four weeks and has gone above 50 once. Yeah. And that 58 game you said, he didn't even score a try in that. Mm. With Jack White and playing on that edge, I... Jack is not going to get the ball out to him very well. And 
you can sort of make a case. I could make a bit of a case for it if Latrell was there, but with him, him missing two of their next three games, like is Jai Gay can he head out to him? Probably not. So, meh. Yeah, hard pass from me. Four oh five k is good to me, but I'll tell you what's better: three oh five k in four weeks. Yeah, and, and that's what I mean. Yeah. And that's like when you know Latrell will be back, obviously after round nineteen. And if the bunnies have shown some continued form for that period, and he's under four hundred k, I'm not saying I'm putting a line through him, but just not yet. All right. Oh, oh, you go from. <clears throat> Pretty disgusting stat sheets to some of my favourites mm. in the league. Let's talk about Max Plath. Strap in and fill the G's. Let's go. <laughs> Do some Plathomatics. Plathomatics. <laughs> uh, uh, Maxi Plath, uh, one that you've been really keen on all season. Roo. I would say more from a just a rugby league eye test uh, perspective, not – I slept on him super coach wise. Yeah. I love lo- like the- everything about him I just love. I didn't think he'd be this good in super coach. Yeah, you right? never really brought him up super coach wise, no. but look You like- know what? I still remember sitting there doing my waiver wise. I think it was round three or round four, and he was sitting there and I mm. noticed the dual position. I thought, oh, and then I thought, ah, oh, he won't hold on to the spot. As much as I love him, he won't hold on to the spot. And it's one of the great regrets because I don't have a five eight. I still don't. He would have solved all my problems. And that's the thing. The Question mark all season one. And to be fair, like enough people have jumped onto him, but I think a lot of people, myself included, have just thought job security. The Dolphins, more often than not, pick a four forward bench and you say, oh, the minute's going to stay there. And I think it was uh, Maxi Bryden or Spy said last night on the podcast, uh, you know, Wayne Bennett really, really, really need to fall in love with him for him to keep playing these big minutes. I think well, Wayne Bennett has well and truly fallen in love with him. Mate, it's a, they, they might make a love story movie out of this. Walt Disney will come knocking. Yeah. And then the third wheel, TPJ, comes in and ruins it for everyone. Yeah. Oh, girl next door stuff, TPJ. Anyway, <laughs> to the start. Jewel to our F58, 544K. Started the season in lesser minutes because his evolution this season has been very rapid. He failed a HIA against Manly, but in the six games that he's played 57-plus minutes, I think that that is going to be his minimum sort of minutes. I think he'll be that 60 to probably 65-minute mark going forward with a bit of a spell. Yep. In those six games, 57-plus minutes, averaging 71.3 points per game. In those games, 56.2 in base stats. At 544K, like... With the dual positioning, plays the next two major buy rounds. I think, I think he's one of those players. That if you own him, I reckon you own him till the end of the season. Not in the mold of like, oh, he's a season keeper and he's going to be the best at five eight or two or F. But he'll chip along and probably average his sixty, maybe a few more, and just go. I don't have a problem with Max. He's 100%. doing a job. Yeah, he'll do a job and he'll. And that, mate, like biggest problem with my team right now is that I don't have any versatility with jewels to mm. be able to move them around. But like you've got Berber, which I'm sure is a huge mm. plus for you. I don't have that. Like, it's awesome. Uh, we, oh, fuck, I wish I had a Max Plath. To literally just switch between 5'8 and second row is huge at the moment. Yeah, and I'm trying to find ways to get him in, but I need to get Teddy in this week who's so expensive that I don't think I can do it. But, yeah, I think he's a great buy. Love that. Uh, Jacob Kiraz, he seems to come up every two weeks or so. Yeah. What do you got for me? He does. Probably because I look at him so much because I'm like, I want him. But uh, the one this week is, mate, just with – well, initially I did it thinking just Stephen Crichton now, but I thought um, Bronson Sherry would be out as well with that hamstring injury. Sherry's been named. So that's great news for Jacob Kiraz owners, and I will tell you why. Uh, I do think he's a season two. Tell keeper. us why, Tim. All right. Uh, break even of 150. Misses – the I've got to edit that in my article. Misses the third major buy round, plays the second one, obviously, being this week. Uh, but back to centre with Critter Gorn. In seven games at centre this season, he's averaged 58 points. Solid, but not keep levels. Yeah. On the wing, an average of 90 points across his six games. So 90? Mm, yeah, mental. Wow. And even in the centre games, there was like a 110 or 115 or something in that. So they're not great numbers, particularly against the Roosters, even with players out. But 793k price tag, that huge break even. Uh, look, I wouldn't be looking to buy him this week. Not ideal for him. Probably consider that when you do your VCs and Cs and whatnot this week. But, I mean, with Critter back next week, he'll probably go out to the wing, which is – oh, you will, which is fine. All right, our next one, Jake Simpkin, friend of the show, Ella Kazma, on Monday decided him 
decided him, <laughs> called him a future immortal of the game. And Jeez. honestly, as the current Manly hooker, it's probably hard to push back on. What have you got for me on Jakey Simkin? Just an interesting little option this week at 217K. Now, as a downgrade for, you know, I'm a Jaden Braley owner who's been coming mm. off the bench, far from ideal. I think a lot of people have got probably one hooker they're happy with. I don't think there'd be a lot out there with two. There'd be a, there'd be a handful, but I think everyone sort of carried that sort of duddish. Do I'm, not, I'm not one of them. Who have you got? Fucking Wade Egan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, that's it. Most people are not happy with at least both their hookers. Simkin with Manly covers round 16 and round 19. Essentially bottom dollar. Played the full 80 minutes against the Dragons on the weekend. Of course, there were injuries and all sorts of things, so those minutes were likely uh, inflated. We'll get to his job security in a second, but I had a bit of a look. In his last f- in five games that he's played in the last two seasons where he's played 64-plus minutes, he's averaged 65 points with 43 in base. Ooh. Yeah, it's so like the base is all right, but uh, does have some attack in him. So he could definitely do a job, but uh, and this is where you'll come in, Rue. Obviously, Gordon Chan come Tong on the bench. I'm trying to find out a little bit more information about Lockie Croak and what's going on with him because the fact that they did sign Simkin suggests maybe it is a little bit worse than – I mean, we haven't heard much is the thing. We haven't heard a thing. So if we knew Lockie Croker, and I hope Lockie Croker's is back very soon, but if we knew he was out longer term – is there a decent minute role for Jake Simpkin moving forward? Yeah, there could be, man. I mean, like, fuck, I remember being over there in Las Vegas and talking to manly people and they would not shut up about Chan Kum Tong mm. and what's his name, the other one that's not playing? Lucky Croker. Humphreys? No, no. What? Humphreys? Oh, Humphreys. Humphreys. They wouldn't shut up about both of them as mm. hookers. And for them to go out and sign Jake Simpkin, like they, they must be seriously concerned about Croker. Mm. It's it's weird to fill a roster spot like that when you, you, you've, got you've already so got many. too many hookers. Like and that's the, uh, uh, like that's not even to mention Carl Lawton, who's been the starting hooker anyway. Yeah. It's bizarre. Uh, and for you know, we sort of spoke pre-show, but for Lawton to move to seven and Sim- and um, I forgot his name again, Humphreys to not start mm. in the halves, they must be fucking off him. Yeah, it's one of the great one eighties of all time. Yeah, exactly right. Might so, be behind Brandon Wakeham. And, and with all those number nines, <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. Oh, <laughs> that that one took a little longer than I thought it would. <laughs> You're uh. You're in a ruthless mood today. Yeah. Thankfully directed mostly at others and not me, so it's good. Yeah. We moved off Wade Egan very quickly, but never trust a guy with an unnecessary why in his name too. That's <laughs> what I've learned this year. <laughs> Learning a lot. Um, so, yeah, look, I don't think I can do the buy just because I, there's such a lack of job security. But if he does keep a sort of 60 to 80 minute role, could be a masterstroke. It could be, and it's one that in hindsight I'm more than happy to find out. Yeah. I don't think I can do it, uh, but we'll see. And I'm just like, if I were to go like uh, Jaden Braley to him, like, okay, I lose a bench forward who's got a bit of value about him anyway. I'm like, does much change? Not really. Not really. Yeah. Anyway. All right, last name, Joe Tarpanay. I've I've taken him at $8.50 on about even this week. I like him for a big game this weekend. How are you um, – I know you're, you're really red hot all season, really keen on Kai Piss Paul anytime try scorer. Did you see what I did last week? No, what? I, um, I was in the hot seat and I wanted to lose and I knew Kai Piss Paul was going to get ruled out. So I took Kai Piss Paul as my bet. So it means I lost automatically, which is what I wanted to do. And fucking Dylan Lucas crashed through on the left edge back. Oh, row. so you got it. You, you got no, 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 I didn't. I still had Kai Piss Paul. So uh. I, I, wa- I wanted to lose because it's about when you are sitting in the seat, not how many bets you right. win. Uh, but yeah. Left edge scored last week. I don't think Kai Pierce Paul would have scored that try, to be fair. <laughs> hasn't scored this hasn't, season. Hasn't, and honestly, hasn't really looked no, like he scoring. Hasn't. There's been no drop over the lines or like within an inch. Just, yeah. just nothing doing. Nah. Has, nothing's been sent upstairs. Hasn't been a kick. He's eight foot seven. Hasn't been a kick that's gone near him. <laughs> How is he not? No, like it hasn't, honestly, hasn't even been a world where he looks like scoring. And like he's going well without going great. But like he had that run against the Roosters way back in around five or six. Where you're like this bloke is an Adonis, like yep. he's going to be a destructive beast. It just hasn't really ha- happened for him, has it? Just hasn't kicked on. It's honestly like I've got him in draft. I've got him in class. I've got him. Mm. I watch him super closely. There's been about three moments where I go, ah, this will be the breaking point. Yeah, this will be the moment where he explodes. Nope, <laughs> no, nope. not this season. <laughs> oh, anyway, Jay Tarpany. 
had that huge round 13 performance with Golden Point. They played an extra nine minutes or something. People flocked to him. Regressed back to his 58 points last week against the Cowboys. Season average 63. Minutes are starting to build a little bit. Still a really popular buy this week, which surprised me. Uh, and the reason that I am not keen on him at all, I don't know why, but there's obviously been a directive for him and the Raiders, well, maybe not the Raiders, for Tarvin not to offload. So in his last – he hasn't – had a single offload in five of his last six games. What the f- what? R- Ricky does this though. He eh? does. I mean, for yeah. a team that struggles to create attacking opportunities, and you've got this, you know, powerful forward pack. A lot of them are great offloaders. I just thought you'd need to get this second phase play going and get the ball moving, and try and create off the back of second phase play. And especially with Jordy Rapana sniffing around the ruck, one offload in six games. I, I don't understand it. You got ball running, hooker, and halves. Mm. One yeah. all, and fullback. It's yeah, it seems odd to me. Anyway, so basically, until he starts offloading, I can't go near him. And you know what? It'll sound really stupid, but when he has one offload, he'll have thirty in the next eight weeks. And just That's what he does. That's what the Raiders do. It's like, it's like as soon as one of them offloads, Ricky goes, "Ah, oh, hold on, it works. This is an idea. What's yeah. wrong with this? It's bizarre." Yeah. Um, so yeah, one to keep an eye on there. That's it. Is that it for the deep dive? Oh, that's it. That was blockbuster stuff. I, I really enjoyed that. Thank you, yeah. mate. That was great. 